In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of graphing. This is important so that when we have an equation, we know what that equation looks like. We know what shape it makes, whether it's a line or a curve or a circle or some other shape. And so this is going to be very useful uh, when we go to study scenarios and, and what's going on with a function or what's going on within a, uh, a word problem or uh, a real life scenario. We need to know what's going on in that picture. So let's start by just going over the basics. Uh, when we're graphing uh, any point, we're going to start with graphing points. We're going to have two coordinates uh, that are going to tell us where that point is. And so there's going to be an x coordinate, and that's going to tell us how far along our x axis we are. We're going to have a y coordinate, and that's going to tell us how far along the y axis we are. The x always runs horizontally, the y runs vertically. At the very center here is this point where they intersect. And this point is called the origin. Now, because these are dealing with numbers, every point has some number corresponding to it. And so the origin, because it's kind of that initial point where everything else is, is moving from, that is the point zero, zero. Now let's talk about this point notation for just a second. What does that mean? So points are always indicated in these parentheses, and they are always of the form x comma y. There's always uh, the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. And so when we have zeros here, that's saying we haven't moved along the x at all, we haven't moved left or right at all, and then we haven't moved up or down at all. So let's take a couple examples. I'm going to graph these points, and I'm going to define them using letters. And so point A, let's say point A is point 1, 3. So the 1, remember, is the x, and the 3 is the y, so that's telling me to move 1 along the x. Now, this is the point zero, zero. Anything to the right is positive. Anything to the left is negative. So if we want to go positive one, we're going to go to the right by one. But I'm not going to put my point there because there's a y coordinate associated with it as well, which is a three. So that's saying I also need to go up by three. One, two, three. And so this would be my point right here. That would be my point A. Now, I don't actually have a scale on my x or y axis. Uh, so it's always a good idea that you label that so your reader understands what you're counting by. I don't have to count by ones. I think that's, in this case, the easiest thing to do. But maybe my point was 100, 300. Well, I wouldn't count by single units until I got out to 100. I would just turn this scaling into counting by hundreds. Or you could count by twos or fives or whatever you want. But it's important to note what those are so I understand now I'm counting one each single time I move over uh, on the dotted lines. Let's take B to be the point uh, negative 3, comma, Two. So this is saying my x is negative 3, my y is 2. I need to move back 1, 2, 3. I need to move up 1, 2. And so this would be my point B. Let's take C to be 0, negative 3. So 0 is my x. That's telling me I don't move left or right at all. But I do need to move down by 3. 1, 2, 3. And that's my point right there. Now, if we look at this 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 uh, x y axis or what we call the coordinate plane, we see there are four distinctive regions. And so, just to be able to find things or to identify where things fall a little bit quicker, uh, we refer to these different areas as quadrants. Four distinctive quadrants. And so, we have this area here. This is referred to as quadrant one. And why would the one start here? Well, this is where both the x and the y are positive. That's a positive sign, not a uh, not an and. X and y are both positive here. Uh, I think the x we moved to the right and y we moved up, so they're both positive. Uh, and then from there we count in a counterclockwise motion. So this is our quadrant two. In quadrant two, the x is negative, but the y is positive. Then we move down, quadrant 3, the x is negative, and the y is also negative. And then in quadrant 4, uh, our x is back to being positive, and the y is now negative, or stays negative from before. And so this just allows us to identify where things are very quickly. So for instance, if I were to give you the point uh, negative 2, negative 1, I can graph that. I know it'd be right about here. It'd be exactly there. But I could say it's in the third quadrant. That quickly identifies where it is. Or if I gave you the point um, 5, negative 7, that would be in the 
fourth quadrant. And so it just gives us a way to talk about the location of where things are. All right, so let's take a look at now some examples of graphing uh, equations. Let's say we have the equation y is equal to 2x minus 1. Now, as we go through this course and as you go through these videos, uh, we're going to understand better and better how to graph these things. So we're not going to have to do this every single time. But anytime we come to a new function, I want to turn this, this equation into a set of x's and y's. If I have this equation and I don't know what it is, I want to figure out a, a list of points that I can graph in the same way that I was just doing. So what I'm going to do is set up a little x, y table. And I'm just going to start choosing some x values uh, that I can plug in to figure out what the y values are going to be. Now, I do know that this is a line. You might not recognize that yet, but this will be an equation that we come to, to know very well. Uh, lines just have a single x and a single y. There's no square roots or x squares, anything crazy like that. And so really for a line, I only need two points. But uh, I think a lot of times, just to make sure that we have everything right, it's a good idea to choose uh, three, even on lines, even though we only have to have those two. And I'm going to plug these in. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 1 gives me a negative 3. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus 2 is 1. So now I have a list of points that I can plot on my uh, x, y axis here. So negative 1 is my x value. Negative 3 is my y. So that's going to be my first point. 0, negative 1, there's my second point, and then 1, 1, there's my third point. And notice all three of these points falling on a straight line. If I'd made a simple little calculation area, you know, maybe when I plug the 0 and I say, hey, that's 2 minus 1, that's going to give me 1. Well, obviously, that's not going to fall into my line. I would have had this red point here and not this point, and obviously, I can't connect those with the line, and so that's a good indication I made a mistake. And so that's the value of of doing three points, it gives us that chance to say, hey, are these all lining up? And as we had it initially, yes, they are. So now I'm, I'm pretty confident that I have it correct. And now I just need to connect my dots. And I'm going to do this with a straight line. And so there is the uh, graph of my equation, y equals 2x minus 1. Let's take another example. Let's say we have y is equal to x squared minus 2. This is a quadratic equation. Anytime we have the x squared, again, we might not know that right now, but we're going to study quadratics a lot more. So we want to be more and more comfortable with seeing an equation, recognizing right away what its name is. Anytime we have that x squared, it is a quadratic. And we're going to figure out what the pattern of these looks like, but for quadratics, we're going to need a few more points. And I'm going to go ahead and do five points. But here's the thing, anytime we're graphing an equation, especially as we get to more and more complex equations that we don't know what they are, we don't know what they're called. Uh, if you ever get stuck or if you're not sure exactly what it looks like, even after you've set up that table, you can always choose more points. You could say, hey, I know what's going on on this right-hand side, but I'm not sure about the left. You can always choose more points. But for right now, I think five points is going to be a pretty good number. I'm also making sure I choose positive and negative points, especially with the x squared function, because I know squareds always turn negatives to positives. So it's going to be important that I see what the negatives do and the positives do. It's a good idea to choose values on both sides of 0. Negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Minus 2 will give me 2. Negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Minus 2 will be negative 1. 0 squared is 0. Minus 2 is a negative 2. 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. And then 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. So this value is actually repeated. And my table got a little bit off there, but those are how the values are lining up. And so now I would like to graph this. So I'm going to uh, place these onto my x, y axis. My x value is negative 2, so I'm going to go backwards 2. And then I'm going to go up 1, 2. That will be my first point. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, negative 2. 1, negative 1, and 2, 2. So what I see this time is it's not a straight line, because if I were to try and connect these two points, say, on a straight line, I would not hit that third. And that's fine. It's not a line. It's this quadratic equation. If I were to connect these two points, that would be a line, again, that doesn't match up. So we're going to have to connect these, in fact, with a curve.
curve. And so I'm going to attempt to connect all the points in a smooth pattern. And if we are to hit our points, that would be our shape. And this shape is actually called a parabola. Quadratic equations always give us this U-like shape. Now it might be moved around or it might be flipped over, but parabola is uh, always a result of these quadratic equations. Let's take one more example. Let's take y is equal to three times the absolute value of x minus one, and then close our absolute value. So this is an absolute value equation. I'm not sure what its shape looks like yet, so let's set up a little x, y table. Uh, again, I have this absolute value, so the, the thing that makes it interesting is that negatives turn into positives. So I want to make sure that I get some negatives and I get some positives. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And when I plug that in, negative 2 times uh, negative 2 minus negative 1 rather is negative 3. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Absolute value is, is positive 1 times 3 will be 3. 1 minus 1 is 0 times 3 is still 0. And then 2 minus 1 is 1 times 3 is 3. So we see that value of 3 repeat. We'll see if we have enough points to, to understand what's going on. Let me... Uh, just paste over my x-y axis so it's a little prettier. Well, here we have a problem. I have an x value of negative 2, that's easy enough, but then my y value is 9 and that's clearly off my axis. And so I, I could draw out a bigger axis or I could go get a different axis, uh, but I'm going to use the same one just because I've already pasted it here. Um, and I told you guys you really should be labeling the axes. I didn't do that in the last few examples because if you're just going to count by ones, if I don't see what those little values are, I'm going to understand them to be ones. Or I'm going to assume they're ones. But here, because ones won't fit in my axis, I'm actually going to count by twos. And so because I'm changing my axis, I do need to label it. If I left those twos off and I just said, hey, this right here at negative two uh, and then nine, I'd, if you didn't have it labeled, I would assume that that was actually, in fact, uh, negative one. Two, four, six, eight. It's actually going to be a little bit higher up. Um, let me draw one more little tick mark. I did, thought this went up to negative 5. It did not. So it needs to be at um, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 9 would be halfway up. So that would be our first point. So here we had a negative 2 because we changed our axis and I counted my way up by 2s. And then I'm halfway between uh, the 10 and the 8. Negative 1, that's going to be halfway between 0 and negative 2, 6 would be right here. Then we're going to have 0, 3. 3 would be halfway between 2 and 4. Then we have 1, um, 0. So notice all of those points seem to be falling on a straight line. They are, in fact, that is all on a straight line. But then once we hit 2, we start going back up again. We get back up to that same value. So something happened here where we, we bend, and that makes sense because we had this absolute value equation, and absolute value equations take those negatives, turn them into positives, but positives stay positive. So it would be pretty linear, except for the fact that it has that sharp bend in there. Now from here, maybe I'm curious, does it keep going up? Uh, it does, but if you weren't sure of that, you can always take more points and plug them in. This is one of those spots that maybe you say, hey, it just bent here, does it bend again? Feel free to graph a few more, but you're going to see that those values just continue to repeat themselves. So at 3, we'd have exactly the, the 6 from before. At 4, we'd have the 9. And so what we do see is that we have uh, a V-like structure, a straight line coming into our turning point and a straight line heading out from our point. Uh, both of those are meant to be straight lines. And so absolute value equations will always give us this shape right here, the shape of uh, AV. So graphing points, graphing equations by plotting the point, not too difficult. Uh, we are going to get more efficient at this as we go forward. So we recognize that each time we have these given equations, they have certain shapes. We're going to be more efficient and learn, you know, how can I adjust that shape based on the numbers inside the equation? 
we're going to get there. This will be transformations. We're going to understand how these shapes work every single time. But for now, or whenever we approach some new equation that we're not sure what its, its shape is, we recognize that we can always graph that equation by just plotting points.